This conference will now be recorded. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining the November edition of our monthly Cybersecure Canada webinar series. Uh, today's topic is the certification process, and it features a represent representative from the Federal Government of Canada, uh, Earl Higgins, who is actually the manager of the uh, Cybersecure Canada program from Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada, uh, or ICED for short. So very excited to have him uh, join us today. Um, I, my name is Brendan Dunphy. I am the Director of Trust Compliance with CyberMB, and I will be your host today. Uh, for the new participants joining today, I do a brief overview of Cybersecure Canada and the requirements of certification, and then I will introduce our guest speaker, Earl Higgins from ICED, and uh, he will present on the Cybersecure Canada registration and certification process. As you may have all heard with that robotic voice <laughs> at the beginning, uh, this webinar is recorded. Uh, participants can ask questions via the chat box. We will address questions during the Q&A portion at the end of the presentation, time permitting, of course. And if there's any questions that are not addressed, uh, they can be asked via email to info at cybernb.ca or to the uh, ICED uh, website, through the ICED website contact us form. Uh, I also do a draw at the end of the presentation for a $50 Visa gift card for just for attending today. So um, we'll draw that at the end after the Q&A and one lucky person will be walking away with a $50 Visa gift card. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to talk about our trust compliance program. So with CyberNB, the trust compliance program uh, is here basically to help organizations of all sizes operate safely in the digital economy. Canadian businesses must ensure their systems, operational processes, and privacy practices uh, are up to par. Um, this is especially true for small and medium-sized organizations, which often lack the resources that larger organizations have to continuously monitor threats and implement uh, really robust programs. So CyberMB connects businesses with accreditation bodies, certification bodies, and practitioners in order to help them mitigate the risk and obtain required certification. Uh, some of our trust compliance initiatives include helping organizations understand and implement cybersecurity and privacy protections in their organization, uh, promoting best practices and assessing vulnerabilities and threats, um, helping organizations expand uh, market opportunities to compete in supply chains in our market and foreign markets, and connecting and coordinating trusted support services for these uh, organizations. So if your organization is looking to implement best practices in cybersecurity, privacy, uh, CyberMB is here to support you. So let's talk about Cybersecure Canada. So what is Cybersecure Canada? Uh, well, basically it's, it's still classified as a voluntary cybersecurity certification. It was developed by the Federal Government of Canada. And um, there are a couple RFPs that are asking for it uh, as a requirement for, uh, for award. Um, basically, um, the downstream, uh, for the, the bidders would be uh, required to achieve certification in order to uh, comply with requirements of that RFP. It was designed with the following goals in mind, to improve Canada's small and medium organization cybersecurity baseline, to raise awareness and educate all Canadians about cybersecurity, and increase consumer confidence in the digital economy. It is based on 13 control areas, as you can see on the screen. Uh, they range everywhere from develop an incident response plan, uh, ensure that you have a plan to respond to very incidents of varying severity, uh, implement access control and authorization. That's what we talked about last month in our webinar. That's actually, you know, making sure that no one has access that shouldn't and the people that do have access are only have authorization to see what they should. And of course, there's many more with the secure mobility, uh, basic perimeter defenses and automatically patching operating systems. I'm not gonna go too in depth with the controls today. Um, Earl may go in a little deeper, but also the if there's if you'd like to get more information on this, you can also always visit our website, and uh, there's the requirements document. So how do you get started? Well, there are 
there is an ISED portal where you can register your organization and select the certification body which you would like uh, you'd like to have review your pro your uh, submission. And Earl's going to go into that a little bit deeper. But CyberB also has a uh, governance, uh, risk, and compliance platform that is used to basically demonstrate what's required for certification and it allows you to walk through the process as you basically organize all your information uh, before you submit and have it all organized in one spot. So to do that, you can just go to our website and uh, under cybermb.ca forward slash trust and compliance and select get started under Cyber Secure Canada. And this will direct you to our online portal. And from here you can, uh, you, you register your organization and uh, you put in all the information like uh, what is your scope of the certification and this will allow the certification body to understand what your network scope is for the certification. And then it'll actually demonstrate uh, bit by bit for each control that um, and what, what you need to implement and what evidence you need to provide in order for that certification body to certify you. And this is actually where the certification body would be able to go in and review your submission and make sure you comply with each control. This slide is an example of one of the controls. So this is a representation of a statement for baseline control 1.3. Um, we call them statements basically because by clicking this implemented button here, you're basically stating that, that, that this statement is true, that the organization has considered purchasing cybersecurity insurance policy that includes coverage for incident response and recovery activities, or you've provided the rationale for not purchasing one. Uh, below that though, you'd see the required evidence section. So for each statement, there is a required evidence and this is where it's going to actually ask you to provide what the certification body needs to see in order to check you off for this control. So for example, uh, with this one, it's asking for your, uh, to provide a copy of your uh, cybersecurity insurance policy certificate or the rationale for not purchasing one. So in this example, I just put the cyber insurance policy certificate attached and you can see that there's an attachment there. So you also notice that the submit for certification button is grayed out. Uh, you won't be able to submit for certification until you actually have completed all of the 51 statements in order to comply with the Cyber Secure Canada certification. And once you hit that certification, uh, we'll contact you and ask you which of the four, uh, the current four accredited certification bodies you'd like to select uh, to review your certification submission. So basically what they'll do is, is jump into this portal um, and go through statement by statement and uh, just make sure that you meet, meet the requirements. And if so, uh, you'll be issued certification for a two year period. Um, if there are some missing components, then they will contact you for a little bit more information or clarification. So like I said earlier, there are four uh, accredited certification bodies. Uh, these four organizations are accredited by Standards Council of Canada to be official accreditation bodies for this program. And they include Bulletproof Solutions, Cybersecurity Canada, SourceTech IT, and WatsEx Cyber Risk Management. At any step along the way, should you require assistance, uh, you can always request a practitioner. Uh, of course, you can use any practitioner that you wish, um, but we do have a list of trusted partners on our website that are trained in the program. As you can see, the four certification bodies are listed there as well because they are very uh, fluent in this program but there are other organizations that are here and ready to assist you if there's anything you need at all. Anything from you know, general inquiries all the way up to complete compliance implementation on your behalf. And I know I've been saying this for a while, but the e-learning modules are coming soon. Uh, they are very, very close. Um, it, I, I don't know, have an exact date, um, but they're gonna be, uh, I think there are com the development is complete. They're just uh, working through the last final pieces to get it uh, launched on their website. Um, and they are designed, of course, to help organizations understand each of the controls and how to implement them. And the best part is they are going to be free of charge, uh, freely available to anyone. General public will be able to go in and, and learn more about this certification and how to implement it. 
So as, um, as you know, the holidays are coming up. So the December month is very short. So we're going to do, do something a little different for the webinar series in December. We're actually going to be hosting it live from the grand opening of the Cyber Center in Fredericton. So the, the building is opening uh, in, on December 3rd, and we're very excited for this. So we'll be presenting live from there. Um, you'll still be able to uh, watch uh, via the uh, go to meeting here, but uh, we'll be presenting live from the, uh, the training center. Um, and on December, we're going uh, for the December 3rd uh, webinar. Our topic will be Privacy Bill 64. So this is a new bill that's uh, been launched in Canada, uh, specifically in Quebec, but it will affect all organizations across Canada, of course. Um, and it's going to discuss, you know, how this will this bill will impact Canadian organizations. Uh, when does the bill go into effect officially? Uh, what are the cyber requirements and what are the fines and penalties for non-compliance? So the Bill 64 is, is seems to be very, very close to the uh, GDPR out of the UK. So it'd be a good webinar to participate in and uh, you, you should expect to see that uh, invite coming very soon after this webinar actually, because it is on the 3rd of December. And uh, our partner Newport Thompson uh, will be our industry guest speaker as they are uh, privacy experts. All right, so now it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Earl Higgins of Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada, or ICED Canada for short. Uh, Earl is the manager of the Cybersecure Canada program and has been involved in all steps of the Cybersecure Canada uh, launch since day one. He holds a master's of applied science in electrical engineering from Dalhousie University, and he has over 20 uh, years government experience. He has led various projects on IT development, business development, uh, strategic planning, and program delivery. Uh, in his current role, he is leading the guy. Uh, sorry, in his current role, he is leading on uh, guiding, helping, assisting Canadian small business uh, sector to improve their cybersecurity awareness and posture. So, with that, I will stop presenting. Earl, I'm just going to make you a presenter. Just one sec. Sure thing. <clears throat> All right, so you're a presenter now. All right, uh, let's see if I can juggle a couple screens at once here. Thanks, Brandon, and a good, I was gonna say good morning, everyone, but I guess it's definitely afternoon for everyone. Um, you should be able to see my slide now, Brandon, just to double check. Yes, sir. Good. So uh, thanks to Brandon, he's actually stolen half my presentation, which is great. Uh, so I don't have to go through it all uh, and explain everything to everyone all over again. And I can prove it because like similar slides, same sort of stuff, which is great. Um, my privilege today is to kind of provide an overview of what Cybersecurity Canada's um, certification process is. And to get us started, <clears throat> I'm just going to ask everyone to take a step back from a perspective thing and say, like, just so I explain, I'm coming at this from the federal government perspective, and I hate being that person because I, the, um, I never thought I'd be one of the federal government people when I started the whole my whole career. Uh, but, but, but from that, what I mean is, uh, Brandon and his team have done an amazing job in delivering solutions and applications to solve a lot of the issues that we aren't positioned as the federal government to solve. So I'm going to take a step back and then explain how they solve uh, those problems. So from a certification process itself, uh, the way it works for Cybersecure Canada is that we consider ourselves the enabler of the program. We actually don't run the day to day. <clears throat> so fundamentally, we set up the program, we've set the requirements in place, we've put in place the framework for organizations to become accredited certification bodies, and we offer a service to facilitate connections so that uh, certification bodies can actually uh, engage with clients and certify organizations. From our perspective, there's basically two paths for an engagement. Uh, organizations like yourselves can engage through our website and use our online application, which I'll show a portion of shortly, uh, to connect to a certification body in order to start the discussion on how to get uh, certified. Uh, during the certification process, so sort of step uh, four, the federal government's out of the picture. 
we are not involved in that process. We don't see anything. All we do is facilitate the front end. And then, then once someone is certified, we are, are notified by a certification body and then award use of the official mark. So it's really a facilitated process. Uh, the second path for certification, and this is where uh, Cyber MB's excellent tool comes in, is certification bodies can reach out, identify, connect, find leads any way that they want and they can inform us on the back end. So the great thing about CyberMB is they have their own portal. Uh, they allow organizations like yourselves to sign up and connect to a certification body, uh, fill out all the information, allow the certifications to happen, and then at the end of that process, the certification body informs us, registers your organization, and then we know about you and award the use of the mark. So effectively what happens is for the second model, the first, one, two, three, four steps. Uh, we as the government have seen no insight to it. We only find out that you're involved when a certification body puts their hands up and say, hey, we've just certified someone, uh, which is great. We're happy about that. That's what we want. We don't want to be an impedance to the process. In fact, uh, what we do is we encourage innovation. And that's the second point I wanted to raise today. Uh, as a certification program, well, we have established the requirements uh, that Brandon is summarizing. I believe he's talked about various ones in various monthly uh, presentations. And we set out expectations for certification requirements. <clears throat> we have not mandated every small step along the way on how an organization must respond to show compliance because there's flexibility that's required. Auditors need the flexibility to examine your organizations, understand your requirements and make those judgments. So we, the government's not involved in it. One of the great things about CyberMB's portal is they've figured out a way to create an excellent tool through the portal, which facilitates that process and helps guide your organization through the certification process. And I love it because it takes a lot of that complexity out of it and makes it more straightforward. So I just wanted to highlight that because that's that's really sort of, sometimes people look at this and go, what's a portal, it's a portal, what's the difference? But really the CyberMB's portal is a tool to facilitate the collection of the evidence required for certification and demonstrate and provide that to the auditors in such a way that it is uh, much easier for them to make a judgment quickly and efficiently. Um, one thing I do want to point out too with our program is that because it is a fully accredited uh, process leveraging accredited auditors under the Standards Council of Canada, they have a very high bar of, uh, uh, for conflict of interest. And what that means to you as an organization, if you are new uh, and you're trying to understand what do I do, I encourage you to reach out to the trusted partners as identified by CyberMB first, rather than contacting a certification body directly, because ultimately auditors are, judgment, are judges. They make a decision, they don't provide guidance. So it could be quite frustrating if you were to go up to them right away and say, what should I do? Because then effectively they're unable to tell you. Their, their, their role is to say, what have you done and, and make a judgment for the certification. So per the slide here, so if you look towards Step one and step two, if you're new to the process, reach out to trusted partners, reach out to your IT team, reach out to whoever, provide them with the Cybersecure Canada cybersecurity requirements and ask them, how do I achieve this? Uh, as a program, we are helping. That's why there's those e-learning programs Brandon has uh, been mentioning. And uh, believe me, we are working quite, quite hard to get them up. I have seen them all and I will validate they exist. They are real. Uh, really what we're doing is working with our department's team to make sure the platform on which we're hosting them is correctly configured and set up so that everyone can access them because we ran into some difficulties there. So it really is a technical difficulty for the final step that they were challenged. Once you've completed that certification request, or sorry, once you've, you're confident, you've got the cybersecurity controls in place, then you can do the uh, submit a request for certification. Uh, Brand Returning to CyberMB tool, that's an excellent tool to go in there. But for by chance, if you do want to go for the federal uh, tool initially, I'm just going to share, switch my screens here quickly if I can. And I'm going to show you our website, which Murphy's Law bid us today. There should be, let's see if this one works. 
So I'm sharing just my browser. You go to Cybersecure Canada. On the right hand side, there is a get started. And then right there, there's get certified. And also too, if you're ever curious or want to validate which organizations are the accredited certification bodies, we also list them on our organize, on our website so that you can contact them directly. But say you do choose to use the federal government's portal to make that connection. You simply go to the get certified link and then you get into a government, it's what we call a single sign-in. The government is uniform or is working towards a uniform uh, tool to sign on. Uh, this is sort of the line of sign in right here. We use the G GC key. Um, what I'm going to point your attention to is that top bar, which is maintenance. Unfortunately, the portal's offline right now as we're dealing with some additional uh, challenges due to some cloud environment changes, which has impacted our ability. Um, I have been advised that it will be up and going before the end of the week. So I encourage everyone here, if you want to check it out, please uh, go to our website, log in, create your organization. Uh, once you're there, you simply click on GC key, you can create one. If you already have one, you can use it. <clears throat> you log in and you'll just simply be asked to create a, um, uh, an organization profile and then select your certification body, go through a couple uh, checklist questions and click engage. So it's very much a matchmaking service. The certification bodies will be um, told or emailed that you're looking to engage with them and they'll immediately reach out to you uh, through your uh, choice, other email, phone, and uh, you guys can start to work on setting up an agreement and how to complete the certification. I will point out though, is that if you are, or when you are successful in getting certified, we as the government do ask you to actually be in our portal because that is how we administer the use of the government's uh, certification mark. Uh, Essentially, you need a profile, your link to the CVs, we can, they can help facilitate that on the back end, but you will have to log in and accept the terms and conditions and use of the mark uh, and answer a few other questions associated to uh, whether or not you want your organization on our website. Um, I think that's about it. I think there's like two questions. And after that point in time, you have access to the mark through our portal, so you can download it for your digital marketing. And uh, our system will then remind you in about two years time that you're due for recertification. So really that is the certification process. And a high level thing, implement your cybersecurity controls, engage with the certification body, go through the certification process. And as you can see in the previous slide, it is sometimes a little bit iterative because sometimes auditors have questions. Once you are certified, you would simply uh, work with your certification body to make sure your organization is registered in our portal so that you can accept the terms and conditions and close off the process and get access to the uh, Cybersecure Canada certification mark. And that, in a nutshell, is it. So I'll turn it back over to Brandon. Thanks, Earl. That was great. So uh, I do have a few questions coming in already. Um, yeah, perfect. The first one is, how many organizations have, have been certified to date? To date, we have approximately, I think we have 15 organizations certified. We have a couple hundred in the process. Um, some organizations are finding that they signed up early on, and now they're working through it with their certification bodies to get uh, certified, but they're still early in the implement security control space. So that is uh, taking some time as they prioritize other activities as well. Mm -hmm. And there was also a question about um, the, uh, the legality between uh, an organization who is a certification body providing practitioner services and certification services. Is there, I, I know you touched on this uh, briefly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So just, yeah, to give you a quick summary for that, um, organizations that are certification bodies are allowed to also offer um, uh, consulting uh, services. However, it's with very strict requirements around that, how it's done, and they're held to very high standards. Uh, our organizations or our CVs are uh, accredited to ISO 17021, which is conformity assessment bodies, this is the more formal name. We just call them CVs. Um, and as part of their annual audits, they have to demonstrate how they are maintaining sufficient um, controls to avoid conflict of interest. Um, examples can be the person that's doing the consulting uh, 
cannot have worked on the uh, the auditing side and vice versa for periods of years. Uh, they can't report to the same manager. I don't know all the requirements, but that's part of how they set those up. So it, it is quite stringent. Interesting. Uh, and there's another question that's asking, uh, is there any government fees associated with this certification? Uh, government fees, no. So we as the government, we get nothing of it. The only fees that you would pay as an organization for certification would be uh, the cost to implement the cybersecurity controls, whether it's consultants, any sort of hardware you have to buy or whatever. So the investment costs there. Uh, the work with the certification bodies they are independent third-party organizations so they charge for their work and any other supporting tool costs uh, so for example uh, it could be a tool like i don't know cyber mb's particular situation but like you i could imagine an organization coming out as, as a service provider saying we can help people get certified go to our website set everything up and facilitate controls and stuff like that so it would be part of the step one to implement security controls but the federal government has no uh, cost requirements going to the federal government. Perfect. Is there any other questions today? All right, so I'll, oh. It's, oh, yes, correct, yes. All right, so, um, I'm just going to stop recording so that I can draw for the $50 gift card. Just one sec. Oh, there's one more here. Yeah. Uh, is there a fee charged by certification bodies fixed by the federal government, or do we have to negotiate with them directly? You negotiate with them directly. Perfect. All right. So I'll stop. Is there? Uh, I'll ask one more time. Is there any other questions before I stop the recording? I'm going to throw this slide up, Brandon, just for fun. Uh, the program itself, because fees came up, isn't funded. <clears throat> so Cybersecure Canada isn't funded, but we are working very actively in the background at multiple levels, trying to identify other programs, whether federal, municipal, or provincial, that can um, and encourage them to make sure cybersecurity investment <laughs> is part of their funding schemes. Mm -hmm. um, so current ones we're working with right now is Canadian Digital Adoption Program, through I said, some of the regional pro, uh, regional development agencies have programs underway or are looking to launch them. There's also uh, IRAP, the Canadian Industrial Research Assistance Program. And like I said, we're working trying to identify more. Um, so rather than being cyber secure, here's the money, it's how can we leverage the existing stuff and in increase the awareness amongst government programs that cybersecurity is a worthwhile and ideally a priority investment tool so that they uh, facilitate investment in those areas. Yeah, it absolutely is. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I'll just stop the recording.